it's easier than you think. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the PowerPoint Club. Before we get going, a massive thank you and welcome to all our new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the videos. So today's tutorial is a fun one. As a designer, I love this hand painted 3D typography sign writing style. Now, while my paintbrush skills are nowhere near that of these amazing artists, I can definitely show you how to create a similar effect in PowerPoint. It's super easy and can be used for tons of stuff to give your text a wow factor in your presentations, export to a PDF and use for printer stationery or signage, or just to impress girls. Let's get to it. First up, let's change our background colour. As always, I'm cheating a little bit with my colours pre-selected. I promise it's just to save time on the video. Next, let's add in our text box and create our typography. Type in your desired wording. Hit center align. This will make for easier editing down the road. I'm going to use white for our main color. And I'm using a font called Oslo Black. Now, while most fonts will work for this kind of style, I found that the kind of simple plain fonts are the best for that true kind of sign writer style. Resize your text. Pro tip, hit control and square bracket on your keyboard. Center on the screen using the smart guides to help. Next, hit control D on your keyboard or press control and click and drag to make a copy and move it to the top. We're gonna use PowerPoint's selection pane function. Now, don't worry, it's easy to use, it's super helpful and will be a great addition to your skill set on other projects. So with your text selected, hit shape format and choose the selection pane. The selection pane works a little bit like the layers menu in Photoshop. You can use it to label items on your slide, like I have my colors. It's especially handy if you have loads of stuff on your slide, you can use it to hide and unhide elements when editing. So let's go ahead and name our top layer. Let's call this one extrude, I'll explain later. And let's name the second layer surface shadow. Position both text boxes directly over the top using the smart guides to help align them. Turn off our surface shadow layer and let's edit our extrude layer. With the format shape tab open, go over to text options and hit text effects. Drop down to 3D format is where we're going to specify the type of 3D style that we want. Go over to depth. In Adobe Illustrator, we'd call this extrude. It's essentially how far we want our text to sit off the slide to basically push it upwards. We need to specify a size for this depth. For large text, 100 points is always a good starting point. You can always come back later and adjust as necessary. Now we need to change the color of our depth. Again, I'm going to use my eyedropper to select this pinky red color. You won't see any changes just yet, so don't panic. We can also choose the material and lighting settings. Now I've played around with all of these combinations and I found that these settings give the best results. For material, hit plastic. And for lighting, hit glow. So we've specified how we want our 3D text to look. Now we need to add in our rotation. Hit 3D rotation. And from the presets, let's choose oblique and the bottom right option. Boom, that's our 3D text. Simple, right? I like to give this layer a subtle shadow. So go back to text effects and choose shadow. And in the presets, match the direction of our extrusion, which in this case would be bottom right. Now that our text has some height, this is gonna create a shadow on the surface. So let's go back and add this in. Let's go back to our selection pane, hit shape format and selection pane, turn off our extrude layer and turn on our surface shadow layer. 
go back over to text effects and we're going to do exactly the same but with different settings to achieve a different type of shadow. Hit 3D format and on our depth option a good rule of thumb is to double the size of the depth of our extrude layer, in this case 200. For our depth colour we want it to be slightly darker than our slide background. An easy way to do this is to select the eyedropper and sample the background colour, go back to colour and hit more colours, we get this window with this handy new and current colour window. Drag this slider down a little and now you can see the difference in the new window against the current colour. For our surface shadow we want this to be completely flat, no highlights or texture, just a solid block of colour. For material make sure you choose matte and for lighting choose flat. Head down to 3D rotation and in the oblique presets we want to choose the opposite direction to our extrude layer, in this case it's the left option. There we go, a nice, subtle, flat shadow. Let's head back up to our selection pane and put both layers together. Now, tell me that wasn't easy. With both layers selected, you can easily scale and the settings will scale with you. And, as we kept the text as actual text and not shapes, you can go in and edit the text, change the font and colours and edit the 3D settings. Just use the selection pane to turn on and off each layer as you edit. So let's try another effect using exactly the same formula. Let's change the background colour, I'm cheating again with my eyedropper. Create your text box, centre a line, change the colour and the font. Position in the centre of the slide and make a copy and position above. Open the selection pane and name the top layer extrude and the bottom layer surface shadow exactly as we did before. Position both text boxes over the top. Let's turn off our surface shadow layer while we work on our extrusion text options and text effects, 3D format to choose our style, depth to 100 as a starting point, I'm going to eye drop in this dark blue colour for our depth colour, extrusion lay material is always plastic and lighting is always glow, I've tried them all and these work the best. Let's now rotate we're only interested in oblique, choose left or right. Now let's add our subtle shadow, always the same direction as our extrusion. Now let's turn this layer off and create our surface shadow. d format to define our style, double the depth 200. For the depth colour I'm going to use the eyedropper and use the more colour and slider trick to darken our colour slightly more than the slide background. Surface shadow material is always matte and the lighting is always flat to give us a solid flat shadow. Add our rotation presets, oblique and choose the opposite direction to our extrude layer. Back to our selection pane and let's put them together. It 
looking really nice, but let's add one more final touch to bring it to life. Grab the extrude layer, and choose a solid line from our fill, change the color to white, and bump up the width. Just gives it a nice flash of bright color. Again, totally editable and scalable. So onto one final effect. I've gone ahead and created this design using our formula, but I have one more copy of text sitting on top of our two other layers. And I've named this one bevel in our selection pane. Turn off the other layers and head over to text effects, 3D format, and let's give this front face a slight bevel edge. On the top bevel menu, choose the angle preset and we get this kind of chiseled effect. Head over to the width and increase the width until the lines meet to a point like this. So there we go, three super easy 3D textiles to go crazy with. Just remember the formula and you can use this with any fonts and color combinations to create some cool designs for your presentations or print work. Who says PowerPoint's boring? As always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and even learned a thing or two along the way. Please subscribe, like and comment and more videos are on the way.